First song will be 194. If you'd like to be turning there, 194. As far as I know, Dale is still doing as well as can be expected. The Thompson family is doing better, so that's good. And Chris got held up. I can't remember what town now, but Chris got held up, and he should be back pretty soon. So need to keep him in our prayers. And services this evening at 6 o'clock, Wednesday night at 7. 194. We read of a place that's called heaven. It's made for the pure and the free. These truths in God's word He has given. How beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy and free. Fair haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. In heaven no drooping nor pining, no wishing for us where to be. God's light is forever there shining. How beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy and free, fair haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be! Pure waters of life there are flowing, and all who will drink may be free. Rare jewels of splendor are glowing. How beautiful heaven! must be, how beautiful heaven must be, sweet home of the happy and free, fair haven of rest for the weary, how beautiful heaven must be. 218. eight. After this song, we'll ask Brother Charlie to lead us in a word of prayer. 218. I know that my Redeemer lives and ever prays for me. I know eternal life He gives from sin and sorrow free. I know, I know that my Redeemer I know, I know, eternal life He is. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. He wills that I should wholly be in word and thought, in deed. Then I His holy face may see. When from this earth I free, I know, I know that my Redeemer is. I know, I know eternal life He gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer is. I know that I'm too sinful. His saving grace is nigh. I know that He will come again to take me home on high. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life He is. I know, I know. prepared for me. 
all-powerful creator, sustainer of all things. We give you thanks for all the blessings you've given us. We give you thanks for each and every day you've given us on this earth. We give thanks for the family and the friends we have. We give thanks for all the material blessings you've bestowed upon us. We give thanks for all the spiritual blessings you promised us in heaven with you someday. We are all sinners. We all fall short. We pray for your forgiveness when we do fall short. We pray that we will be made stronger, that we will be made better, that we can be truer and better servants to you, that we can stay away from sin more readily, that we will see sin when it comes our way, distinguish it, and stay away from it. We pray that no temptation will overcome us. When we do sin, that we will repent, regret our sins, that we have even thought about them, much less did them, that we will repent and ask for your forgiveness. We pray for this nation. We are so divided in so many ways, and our morals have gone so bad. We pray that we may be restored to be better than we are. This nation will be a country in which all are treated fairly and equal government will be one which treats all men equally and fairly. It will have the kind of government that will provide the best for everyone concerned. It will have a government that will have a moral backbone to do the right thing, to look at your, the Bible, your word, and to base its laws and governances upon it. We pray for all the leaders that they may make wise and just decisions leadership of this country. We ask that you please provide us with the things we need in this life, food, shelter, and other things. We pray for our families that they may be healthy and well. We pray for those that are sick and ill, that they'll be healed and if not healed, that they will be comforted by you. We pray for all the lost in this world, that they may find their way unto you pray for the speaker of the seat this morning that he may teach a gospel that's in total accordance with your word. And that we may look and listen to it and glean things from it that we can improve our lives and make us better for it. All things are asked in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. The song before the Lord's Supper this morning is 145. <coughs> 145. <coughs> and I was going to sing the first three verses and the last verse. We'll try to do the first, second, and fifth verse. And if you are able, if you would, please be standing and remain standing for the prayer that follows. One hundred forty five. I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. How he left his home in glory for the cross of Calvary. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea. I was lost, but Jesus found me, found the sheep that went astray. Through his loving arms around me, drew me back into his way. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me, sing it with the saints in glory, gathered by the crystal sea. He will keep me till the river rolls its waters at my feet, then he'll bear me safely over where the same Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ 
Christ who died for me, sing it with the saints in glory, gathered by the Christmas scene.
how it can be. Our Father in heaven, we partake of this fruit of the vine that represents the blood that was so freely shed for our sins. We pray that we will do so in a manner pleasing to thy sight. But it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Supper. At this time, we will contribute to our Lord and Savior, so there will be no collection when He comes. Next song is 402. Four zero two. They tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded sky. They tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of a home where my friends have gone. Oh, they tell me of that land far away where the tree of life in eternal bloom sheds its fragrance through the unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me that he smiles on his children. And his smile drives their sorrows away. And they tell me that no tears ever come again In that lovely land of unclouded day Oh, the land of cloudless day Oh, the land of an unclouded sky Oh, they tell me of a home 
when the storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. If you'd like to mark your songbooks, the song of invitation will be 674. 674. And the song before the scripture reading will be 249. We'll sing 249 at this time. And after this song, Joseph will bring the scripture reading. And Earl will bring the lesson. Time is filled with swift transition, not a burden who can stand, builds your hopes on things eternal, hold to God's unchanging hand, hold to God's unchanging hand, hold to God's unchanging hand, build your hopes on things eternal. Oh, to God's unchanging hand, trust in Him who will not leave you. Whatsoever years may bring, if my earthly friends forsaken, still more closely to Him cling. Oh, to God's unchanging hand, oh, to God's unchanging hand, Build your hopes on things eternal, hold to God's unchanging hand. When your journey is completed, if to God you have been true, fair and bright the home in glory, your enraptured soul will view. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Oh, to God's unchanging hand, build your hopes on things eternal. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Scripture reading this morning will come from Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. But to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be the heirs of salvation? Give it a scripture you does. Probably figured out we're not talking about angels this morning. Charlie's doing a good job on some practical lessons, so I thought I'd do a topical one. We don't talk much about angels. Uh, there's not a whole lot revealed about their nature. We're, we're just going to do an introduction this morning. But the word angel in the Old Testament is a Hebrew word, melach. And in the New Testament, it's angelos or angelos. It means simply a messenger. Now, we... When we're talking about angels this morning, we're not going to get into the weeds. I'm going to lump every heavenly being, the host of heaven, the messengers, all of them. Uh, I, I think there are some minor distinctions, but that's for a more in-depth lesson. We're going to lump all of that into angels. So I just want to talk about them now. Joseph read in Hebrews chapter 1, and the Hebrew writer asked a rhetorical question. Now, they're not ministering spirits. Ministering spirits to us, to, to who? To us. Uh, God works providentially uh, behind the scenes today. And uh, one of the ways is through his angels, I believe. 
we want to look at some some things about the angels, some aspects of them, how they relate to us. And this is just an introduction. There's we would be we would be talking for weeks and weeks if we looked at every verse in the Bible that deals with angels. Number one, Hollywood has convinced us, or tried to convince us. And a popular belief is that when good people die, Christians die, go to heaven, they become angels. Well, the future state of man is like angels. Mark chapter 12 and verse 25, Jesus says, For when, when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. And notice he doesn't say they become angels. He says they are like angels in that we're not going to marry or be given in marriage. John said in John 3, 1 John 3, he said, Beloved, now we are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when He, that is Jesus, shall appear, we shall have life in Him, for we will see Him as He is. We don't know exactly what we're going to be like. We're going to be similar to the angels. We're going to be like Jesus. But we need to understand that angels are not human souls. Go with me, if you would, to Psalms chapter 148. Psalms 148. Beginning in verse 1. The psalmist says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, that is Jehovah, from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise ye Him, all His angels. Praise ye Him, all His hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all the ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens and ye waters that are above the heavens. Let them, verse 5, let them praise the name of Jehovah, for he commanded and they were created. Now he, he includes angels in this list. God created the angels. And notice, he created them as angels in this context. In fact, we can find out when if we go over to Job chapter 38. about the creation though in Job and he says that uh, yeah. he talks about this, the creation and that the angels heralded the creation I am sorry now, Job 38. I thought I was feeling better today, but maybe I'm not. Job chapter 38, beginning in verse 4. Now, these are questions that God's asking Job. Questions he can't answer. He says, Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Verse 5. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line there? Verse 6, Whereupon are the foundations thereof fasted, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Now verse 7, When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. 
Who are the sons of God? Well, we go back to chapter 1, verse 6. It's all the heavenly hosts. In fact, that Satan came in before God with all the sons of God. It's everyone that was in heaven at one time. But notice the timeline here in verse 7 of Job 38. He's talking about when, when was the world creation? Where were you when I created the world? The angels were there. The sons of God were there. And they shouted with joy. So God created them as angels. And they were created sometime before this world was created. We don't know. But they existed when God created this universe. And he says they shouted for joy. You know, Paul talks about the spiritual realm or heavenly realm in 2 Corinthians 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And he talks about it in the third person, but most commentators agree he's talking about himself. Probably when he was beaten and left for dead. 2 Corinthians 12, beginning in verse 2, he said, I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knows. Such an one caught up to the And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knows. How that he was caught up in the paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for man to utter. And he says, I don't know if I, I don't know if this man actually left his body or if this was a vision. That's what he's saying. But he was caught up into the third heaven and he in the paradise and he saw unspeakable words which is not lawful to others. There is no language that God has given us that can describe him or the spiritual realm if you want to call it that. What we're going to be like we don't know because we can't describe it. It's beyond our understanding. There's no testimony outside the Bible for what heaven or hell or anything on the other side of this life is life. God has described it through His Word, but it's just simple descriptions. Paul tells us that angels exist as spirits. So, man is going to be like an angel. We don't know exactly what that's going to be like. We can't describe what it's going to be like because it's beyond human understanding. But God created the angels as angels before this world began. And there's nothing that can even describe what they're like because we don't know what they're like other than their spirit. Let's look at some aspects of angels. You know, some angels were good, some bad. Now we need to understand no angel was created bad or wicked. They became bad. In Jude chapter 6, Jude said, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he that is God hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness under the judgment of that great day. God created everything good. We go back to Genesis chapter 1. Every day when God created something, he said, and it was good. No different from the angels. They were good. But apparently... The implication is they had free will. They chose, they chose not to keep their first habitation. Second Peter chapter 2, if you follow it along. Second Peter chapter 2, beginning verse 4. Peter says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned. Now think about that. The angels that sinned. But cast them down to hell, or Hades, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them with an overthrow, making them an example to those that should live ungodly. And deliver just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelt among them, in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Okay, this is all parenthetical. If God spared not the angels, 
And if God saved Noah, and if God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, and Bex, then, verse 9, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished. Even the angels of sin will be punished. And notice something there. Peter, or not Peter, Peter implies that they were under law because John said in 1 John 3 and verse 4, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Now he's talking about the law of Moses here. But the angels had to be under some kind of law. What did they sin against? They sinned against God, but they sinned against God's law. There's law in heaven. People think that, well, we get to heaven, there's not going to be rules or anything. No, there's law in heaven. God's very nature, you know, morality is simply an expression of God's nature. What's good is good because God is good. What's evil is because it opposes God. And it's going to be the same thing in heaven. The law is simply what God says is right. It's simple as that. And there is law in heaven. And the angels somehow violated that law and they lost their first estate. And God cast them out to Hades, the Hadean realm, waiting for punishment, waiting for their eternal punishment. And we can get into them being released in the first century and possessing people, but that's a whole other lesson. Those angels chose to violate God's law. Because Paul said in Rome, or yes, Paul said in Romans 4.15, he said, where there is no law, there is no transgression. If there aren't any rules to be broken, we can't break them. So the implication is, yes, there is law in heaven. Now some angels stay good. In Psalms 103, Psalms 103, verses 20 and 21. The psalmist says, Bless the Lord, ye angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye hosts, ye ministers or servants of his that do his pleasure. Well, let's read again. Who are, the, who are the faithful angels? Who are the good angels? Bless the Lord, ye angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of the Lord. Bless ye the Lord, all ye hosts, ye servants of His that do His pleasure. Why well, see He's fond of the verse in Revelation that says we're created for His pleasure. The angels were created for His pleasure. And those that do His pleasure are the ones that are blessed and faithful and get to keep their home in heaven. But for some reason, some of the angels chose not to do His pleasure or cast down. A lot of questions about this, more questions and answers on what happened that caused all of that. That's really not stated. We need to understand also that angels, even though they have power, if you will, above ours, they're still just fellow servants of God. If you go to the book of Revelation, verse 19, or chapter 19, uh, Revelation chapter 19, Verse 10, there's two, two verses, they say the same thing. Now, Paul is seeing this, or John is seeing this vision, and this angel is showing him heaven, He's showing him all these things that are going to happen. And in 1910, Revelation 1910, and I fell at his feet, that's the angel's feet, he said, I fell at his feet to worship him. He fell at the angel's feet to worship the angel. And he, that is the angel, said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The word fellow servant there is sundulos. It means a co-slave, a servitor or minister of the same master. Fellow servants. We have different abilities. But we're equal in the sense that we have we're both just servants of God. And he says the same thing again over in chapter 22. 
uh, verses 8 and 9. I, John, saw these things and heard them, and when I heard them, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then said he unto me, See that I do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, same word, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. I am your servant just like everyone else is faithful to God. We shouldn't fear angels. We shouldn't worship them. In fact, we're told not to worship them. We're warned in Colossians about those that would try and teach us to worship angels. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 18. Paul says, and he's, and he's talking about those that give, keep the Jewish traditions. Apparently it was a tradition to worship angels. Apparently. He says, let, let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he had not seen vainly puffed up by his flesh and mind. Don't let everybody sit in judgment against you because you don't worship angels. Because we're not supposed to worship Jesus. Last point. Not only are angels not human, some are good, some are bad. They chose to be bad. Not only are they our fellow servants to serve God and helpers, as we read in Hebrews 1, angels haven't been given the authority of God today to relate any new gospel. No new truth. Now, 99% of the people that claim to be Christian believe that God is dribbling out new truth every once in a while or personally guiding you from everything from what career you should take to where you should park at Walmart. I'm not kidding. People pray for weird things. And they believe the Holy Spirit guides them. But the angels and the Spirit of God, no one's going to give us any new revelation today. In Galatians chapter 1, beginning of verse 6, Paul says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from Him, that is Christ, who called you under the grace of or God, not Him, not God, Christ, but God, from God that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, that's our point, another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But, notice this, he's talking about his apostles, he said, but though we are an angel from heaven, Preach any other gospel unto you than that which you preach. It's with that which we preach to you. Let it be accursed. Even if an angel brought a different revelation, that kind of knocks Joseph Smith in the head, doesn't it? Knocks all these modern day people in the head. Anyone that preaches anything different than what Paul and the apostles preached in the first century is wrong. And they will be cut off. That's what the word curse, a curse here means. Cut off from God. They may stand before the Lord in judgment, as Jesus said in Matthew 7, saying, Lord, Lord, did we do mighty, many mighty word, wonderful works in your name? Did we cast out demons? And he said, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. People are sincerely believing that God is speaking to them today. They are sincerely believing that we have new revelation today. But the inspired apostle said, No. Everything you need is here. The revelation of the gospel was final. In Jude verse 3, Jude says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, that salvation is available to everyone, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. The article the is there. That means the gospel. The faith. And that's not a personal faith. Which was once delivered unto the saints. That's the King James. Actually, a better translation would be once and for all. Or once and for all time. It was complete. People say, well, yes, I believe the Bible is God's Word, but I, I, need, I need direct intervention in my life to guide me to be faithful to God. No, that's not what God said. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, According as His divine power has given unto us all things, that pertain to life and godliness, not how? Through the knowledge of Him that called us to glory and virtue. Through this. The Bible is everlasting. The New Testament, the Gospel. 
Back to Revelation 14, 6, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell in the earth, and to every nation, and to kindred, and tongue, and people. Everlasting gospel. Angels are our fellow servants. They're ministering spirits. Ministering means a servant. And as I said, my opinion is that that's how God answers prayers, providentially through His angels. They help us in this life. They're our fellow servants. Everyone that's faithful in God is a fellow slave, fellow servant to every angel. Nothing to be feared in angels. Nothing to be worshipped. We're not going to be angels when we die. We'll be like them. But we're not going to be angels. We're not going to... <coughs> We're not going to somehow come back to earth and help you. We're not going to be like Clarence in a wonderful life. In fact, the Bible tells us that those who go to heaven don't have any knowledge of what's going on under the sun. There's no, there's no holes in the floor of heaven. The people in the spiritual world are cut off from this world. Angels go back as messengers. So don't expect angels, don't expect to be an angel someday. Don't expect an angel to stand at the foot of your bed and give you some new message from God. And never ever bow down and worship an angel. All these things are laid out in the Bible. If you're not a Christian this morning and you haven't obeyed the gospel, you need to go back to Jesus Christ now the time. These things are essential, they're eternal. God's angels, his ministering spirits are here to help us who are Christians. But we have no access to the mercy of God. We have access, no access to the spiritual blessings of God outside of Christ. And if we left walking in the light, we need to return because, again, there's no access to God's grace if we reject Him and walk away. <coughs> if you need to respond to the gospel, won't you please come on in? Have you been to Jesus for the power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you holy, trusting in His graces? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul? Cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white? Closing song will be 385. 385. After this song, we'll ask Brother YC to lead us in a word of prayer. <clears throat> no tears in heaven, no sorrows given, all will be glory in that land. There'll be no sadness, all will be gladness, when we shall join that happy band. No tears, no tears, no tears up there.
sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears, no tears, no tears up there, no tears in heaven will be known. Glory is waiting, waiting up yonder, where we shall spend an endless day. There with our Savior will be forever, where no more sorrow can dismay. No tears, no tears, no tears up there, sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears, no tears, no tears up there, no tears in heaven will be known. Some morning yonder, will cease to ponder for things this life has brought to view. All will be clearer, same ones be dearer, in heaven where all will be made new. No tears, no tears, no tears, no tears up there, sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears, no tears, no tears up there, no tears in heaven will be known. Our divine Father, which art in heaven, we come to your throne at this time, thanking you for this day and the blessings of it. We ask at this time for the forgiveness of our wrongs in order that we can stand before your throne justified and request petitions of thee. We are especially grateful for your Son you allowed to take our place on the cross if we but obey him. We thank you for the word that's left in the light for our path here on this earth. We pray that this congregation will worship according to your desires, your dictates, and your pleasure. Each person here will glorify you with their lives. We pray that you, we pray that we have worshiped you that way this morning. We pray that you send us some rain and we could prosper and may we always use it to please you and glorify you. We pray that you admit the leaders of this nation to lead in such a way that we would be safe and could worship the unmolested. Right now, to keep us safe, we ask in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen.